first with Russell Johnson uh, as our um, uh, DA and he's lended you know some help our way but it is an issue we do need to think strongly about this one of the things that you all can do as citizens protect your medicine cabinet 30 seconds remaining protect your medicine cabinet keep an eye on your own prescription drugs dispose of them properly and you know like we've been hearing in other um, parts of the world if you hear if you see something say something thank you Ms. Schultz Mr. Mike Cartwright, this is your question. How confident are you that you will be able to make those tough, unpopular decisions when you are faced with them? I don't have a problem making tough decisions. But I think before you have, make a tough decision, I think you have to look at a situation or a problem from all sides. I think you need to prepare yourself for the future so that you don't have to make really hard decisions. I mean, if you're looking 20 years down the road, if you're buying equipment now, and you know that the lifespan on that equipment's 20 years, Save money for it. So when it's time to replace it, you can replace it. If you've got to raise taxes, then you've got to raise taxes. But hopefully, you don't. If you're a good steward of your money, then hard decisions aren't hard to make because they're not as hard as you think they will be. Two terms that I learned when I came on city council that have done me well, the first one is plausible deniability. <laughs> but the second one is fiscal responsibility. It's your money. People think that cities print their own money, that if they have a program that costs $2 million, that hey, guess what? The city's gonna spend $2 million. Hey, well guess what? Where's that money coming from? It's coming from you. You need, to hire some, you need to vote for someone who can be fiscally responsible with your money, who can look ahead to the future and see what we need so we don't have to make a 90 degree turn to get there when we can just make a slight deflection now to get there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. <clears throat> Mr. Stewart, this is your question. How much authority do you think the city manager should be granted and what role should the council take with the city manager? Very simple question. <laughs> uh, he, he has all the authority. I mean, it's citizens, it's the city council, and then it's the general manager. The general manager is in charge of running the city. The city council is only in charge of the general manager, and that's it. We're not in charge of anything else. He reports straight to city council, and we report to the citizens. The citizens come to the city council, the city council goes to the city manager. I have all, all the confidence in the world in the one we've picked. He's a, he's a great guy, he's a great guy. And he has all the authority, and we're gonna give him that authority. And I back every decision he makes, and he's made some hard ones, and we've made some hard ones. And I assure you that I back him with, with, with everything. And. Uh, Sometimes those decisions had to be made, and, and we'll make them. And I just, again, I just want to thank you all for giving me a chance to come up here and answer these questions and to vote for me in November. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. The final question of the night goes to Mr. Tim Brewster. Mr. Brewster, a stormwater fee, also known as a rain tax, is a charge imposed on real estate owners for pollution in storm water drainage from runoff. If elected, do you plan on forcing the rain tax on the citizens like our neighboring town? My answer is absolutely not, period. Thank you, Mr. Brewster.
That brings us to the end of our questions. I appreciate your warm reception, and I yield the floor to Mr. Napier. Thank you, Mr. Thomason, and thank you, candidates. I'd just like to say that there is one thing that these men and women share in common. They all love Loudoun, and they want to see our town be the best it possibly can be. It's not an easy thing to go before the public and answer these questions. It takes courage and dedication, and you all have been most impressive. Each one deserves our respect and applause. Early voting begins October the 17th, and election day is November 6th. Please get out and vote. At this time, we will allow two minutes per candidate to have a closing statement. If there was a question not directly asked of them, this would give the candidate an opportunity to make a statement regarding any one of those questions. What format? Mr. Greenway and Mr. Hendricks' uh, answers, summation, will be recorded. First of all, we'll hear from Mayor Greenway. Mr. Greenway, would you please make your closing statement? Well, to close, I, I would like to say I appreciate uh, the LBA for organizing this event and letting us have the opportunity to share our thoughts. Uh, I would really appreciate uh, the public uh, the voters to come out and support uh, not just me but members of council who have helped us uh, get to the point we're at. Uh, I, I would hope that the work we have done uh, has been viewed as positive for the city. Uh, I would hope people would uh, vote to continue going in the direction we're going. And uh, again, I thank you for the opportunity for this event. I thank you for the opportunity of letting me serve on this council. Mr. Billy Buzz Hendricks. Now, Mr. Buzz Hendricks will make his closing statement. Uh, all I want to do is tell everybody, just get out and vote. Either you don't vote for me, which I hope you do, but just get out and vote. You can't gripe if you don't vote. Several people sit around, well, the people in the city council, well, we've got to say so. And there's so many people running, so yeah, there's a lot of people not happy. Just get out and vote. Please get out and vote, then you can, you can sit around and gripe. And that's basically all i got to say. Mr. John Hutton. Okay, in my opening statement, I looked out and saw my son and daughter-in-law out here, and I said that I, I was married, uh, and uh, I, uh, I guess we've been married 30 years, and we've got three boys, they're men now, 26, 24, and 21, and I'm very proud of them and proud of the, the uh, ladies they have married. Our youngest is not married, he's still at Tennessee Tech. Uh, so we're, we're still trying to help him get through school. Um, but just a little bit more about me. I've, um, I've been in the transportation and logistics business for the last 31 years, and um, I'm a problem solver, and um, it, it's, uh, this is a hard position to, to apply for here. I am asking for your vote, because I will work hard and I'll be fair. Uh, but several people have asked me, why are you running? Why do you want to do this? And it is hard. If somebody tells you that you only have to go to two meetings a month, that's, uh, that's a stretch. Because uh, when I was on the utility board for 18 years, um, I, I did a lot of work behind the scenes. And uh, I'm, I'm proud that some of that work is out here tonight. Um, the, the Hutch property we've talked about, um, I was very instrumental in keeping that going, meeting with attorneys, meeting with economic development uh, manager, our city managers, and speaking of the city manager, everybody that's talked about our new manager here tonight, thirty it is, seconds. It is a great hire, and I was on the hiring committee to help get him here. So there are a lot of things going on that are exciting, and uh, I want to help continue that. 
And I would just uh, like to thank everybody for coming here tonight, and I'd like to ask for your vote. Thank you. Miss Tammy Bivens. <laughs> Thank you all for attending. Thank you, Loudon Business Owners Association, for putting this on. Um, it has been a, a great evening, I think, very, uh, very much needed. You got to meet us, you got to hear us, and you'll get to talk to us after this as well, so please come talk with us. But um, this was not an easy decision for me to make. I uh, debated it, played with it for about three years before I made the decision to do so. Um, it's still not very easy if you see me knock on your door you've probably seen me sit there and fidget waiting on you to open the door uh, because I, this is not my normal for me i'm stepping out of my comfort zone to do this because i want to give back to my city i want to do this to better the city i think we're going in a great direction i want to see us go even further i think i can do well in this position if given the chance uh, again, can't thank my family enough for all of their support and encouragement. Can't thank you guys enough for answering the doors and talking to me, uh, giving me the chance to say hello and introduce myself. And if you all have any questions, please call me. My number is on the back of my flyer. I'll be more than happy to talk with you. Uh, there's also some information about me on there as well. So if you need me for anything, if I am elected to city council, which I hope I am, but if I am, my number will not change it will still be the same so give me a call um, if i'm encountered with a tough choice or a tough vote, seconds remember. i will be coming to the citizens to find out what you want done uh, because that's who i speak for thank you <clears throat> ms renee mcgill schultz I too would like to thank my family for their support and their encouragement. Uh, I appreciate them so much. We tend to do a lot of things as a group and so I really covet their support. And I really want to just thank all of you all because uh, many of you opened a door to me when we came to knock and we spent some time talking and getting to know each other a little bit better or catching up. Um, if you came here tonight, I want to thank you because you came to listen and learn whether you submitted a question to the forum or not, um, your presence here means that you care about our community. And I've been asked more than once, Renee, why do you want to get into politics? Well, in my opinion, serving our town is a labor of love. It is not politics. I want to support my neighbor, and I want my neighbor to support me. I would like to issue a challenge. Let's really, let's don't let this be our last town hall meeting. I love this forum. And uh, let's come together more often to share ideas and ask questions. Uh, after all, most of us choose to live here. Some of us work here and many of us play here. We have that in common. Many times I will serve a family that did not originate, originate in Loudoun. I ask them, why did you choose Loudoun? And they give some answers you would expect, like I was from here and left for work and now I'm back. Or, I want to be close to my kids, or vice versa. And uh, seconds, sometimes they say Loudon and its people are charming. I don't know why, but I was drawn to your town. I want to help Loudon visualize who it wants to be and where it wants to go. I want to capitalize on our resources, but most of all, I want people to love to call Loudon home. Thank you. Mr. Tim Brewster. I really just want to say that Loudon is my town. I love my town. I want to keep my town a small town. I want some growth outside of town to keep our town a small town. I appreciate all of our services. We can't, we couldn't get it better. There's nowhere in the state of Tennessee if you call 911 that you can have a policeman, a fireman, or an ambulance at your house within three to five minutes. We do that in Loudon, and and, and we owe. A gratitude of thanks for everyone who came out here and supported this 
But if you need someone that's going to work your my butt off for you, I assure you, I'm going to fight for you, and I'm a hard fighter. Thank you very much. Mr. Jeff Harris. Again, I want to thank each of you for being here tonight, and a special thank you to those responsible for putting this event together, and, and especially my family who supported me uh, through this endeavor. Each of you have heard and gathered a lot of information from the candidates tonight. I hope this information will help you determine who you're going to place your trust in to lead our community over the next four years. It's a very important decision and should not be taken lightly. In all my levels of management, I've hired several hundred employees. During each hiring process, the things I look for are the applicant's previous work experience, education, skill level that they possess as it pertains to the job requirements that I'm hiring for. I believe we should use the same criteria when electing our public officials. We should evaluate each of the candidates' work experience, education, skill level, as it pertains to the office that they are seeking. In my mind, all of us on stage here tonight are interviewing with you, the citizens of Loudoun, for a position within your company. I would advise you to look at each of the candidates' qualifications before you cast your very important vote. Over the past four years, I've committed myself to doing everything in my power to help our community grow and prosper. I currently serve on several boards, committees, and have personally recruited and helped several businesses get established in our community. I'd be glad to talk to you about those after the meeting. There's several that I personally sweat, sweat equity and personally attracted and recruited them to come here. Um, 30 seconds remaining. I want every business owner, every merchant, and every citizen in the city of Loudoun to know who their mayor is. And I will make sure that I introduce myself to those every merchant and every business owner factory worker or not the workers but the, the plant managers and they will know who their mayor is i humbly ask you to vote in this election for the office of mayor i promise to listen to your concerns and do everything possible to make Lyon the best town it can be thank you mr jimmy parks I'm sort of like Mr. Hutton said. Somebody asked me, why are you doing this? Well, I'm not doing it for me. I'm doing it for young people in this town. My kids, your kids, your grandkids. Because in a few more years, I mean, it's just a fact of life. I'm going to drift off into the sunset. Who's going to be left here? The young people. We're, well, I'm on council. This, these people back here are. They're going to be making decisions that's going to affect your kids, your grandkids. If they want to stay here, they're going to, we're going to have to have provide housing for them. We're going to have to get cleaner road fixed where the housing can come in. But I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing it for my kids and your kids. And uh, I was on council four, six, eight years ago, I was elected council, and we built a swimming pool. I was on the council that built that swimming pool. We got fussed at, we got cussed and everything for closing the swimming pool one year. But you see what we've got out there now? It's a destination for young kids to go to in the summertime. And they all love it. So I'm asking for your vote tonight for four years in city council. If you vote for me, I'd appreciate it. And if you don't, I'll like you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Tim Dixon. I want to thank the Latin Business Association for putting this forum on. I want to thank Jim Thomason, John Napier, Bill Brable, and Loudon High School for having the facility for us to be able to come to. I want to thank the audience for coming out and supporting each of the candidates tonight. And I would appreciate your vote. Thank you. Mr. Mike Cartwright. I've lived in Loudoun my whole life, and I know probably well over half of everyone in the audience here 
And not only have I known you, but I've known your fathers, your mothers, your husbands, your sons and daughters. And for everyone here who doesn't know me, you can ask any one of the people here that do know me. They can say a lot of things about me, and they probably have, and I've probably said a lot of things about them. But one thing they'll always tell you is, if they need someone, they can always call on Mike Cartwright. No matter what else they say about me, they know they can count on me. And if you don't know me, then I want you to know that you can count on me also. I've been here a long time. I hope to be here a long time yet. I think I am the best candidate to fill one of these four seats. And I'm gonna tell you, it's gonna be hard for you as a voter because there's a lot of great candidates sitting behind me. Pick three others, but I hope y'all pick me too. Thank you. Mr. Johnny James. I would like to first thank everybody for coming out tonight and showing interest in your concerns about your city and how it's going to be ran. I truly appreciate that. I would also like to thank all of you, and especially the city of Loudoun, for electing me to city council four years ago and allowing me to serve in your behalf. I tried to do it in a timely manner, in a fair manner, and do the best job I possibly could. I'm seeking re-election and to have November the 6th election for a seat on city council. I truly believe that we have turned the corner and we're on a road to success. And I would like to be a part of that success. I certainly would. And if anything, I would like to be remembered after my tenure on city council's gone, whether it be this time or the next time, that I'm someone who tried to give back and done the best I could for the city that done so much for me. Thank you. Our last candidate, Mr. Dennis Stewart. Well, I'd just like to finish up by saying I'm blessed by God to even be standing here. It's been such a blessing. Uh, I'm just blessed. Uh, I stand up here proud. I'm proud that I'm able to stand in the school that I graduated from in front of you people and, and tell you the job that we've done up here. I'm proud of the time that I've spent with the four city councilmen, the mayor and the four city councilmen. I think we've done a good job. I really do. Uh, you know, a lot of people talk about what they've done, and I think we came in as a city council, and we just didn't talk about we done it. And we went right to work and done what we said we was going to do. And as you look around, why would you want to go back? I mean, it's just getting so, so much better, and it's so cleaner looking than it used to be. Uh, as proud as I am, I'm not satisfied by any means. Uh, there's a lot more work to be done, and I've still got a lot of energy left. I'm a high energetic guy, and uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of work to be done and looking forward to it. Uh, as proud as I am, I'm, I'm not satisfied, though, and uh, I'm just asking you all to let me be a part of it the next four years. Uh, it's been a great time, and, and I'm just, again, just so blessed to even be standing here. I'm just thankful for y'all's vote the last time, and I'll be so appreciative of your vote for this time. Uh, there's not a person in here that doesn't know the pride that I have for this school, for this city, and for those young men that I go out there with every day. And uh, those kids look at me, man, I say, what are y'all gonna do? I'm going to the military. I have nothing against the military at all. I don't wanna see my kids go into harm's way. 30 uh, seconds remaining. Yeah. <laughs> I want them to come back to Loudoun and stay in Loudoun. Uh, I'm proud that my daughter teaches at this school, and it's just it's been a great, uh, humble experience. And uh, I just want to ask you all for your vote and tell you how much I just appreciate the town I live in. I appreciate you people. I mean, you're the best there is. Go be red. I would like to remind our audience that there are copies of these questions asked out in the, out in the lobby if you would uh, like to have a copy. And I will now dismiss you from the stage and you may go to the main lobby and talk to the voters. Thank you, each and every one of you, and good luck. You've been listening to The Forum, presented by the Loudoun Business Association. This broadcast, copyright 2018, WLNT Radio.